What's up guys? Um, we're returning to my uh, crate case vent situation. So I've, I've got a, an issue and um, it's the blow by. Typically you get a little bit and it's normal. Um, I got a lot. And it was, as a result, now I've cleaned up my mess. You know, the bike's been washed. Um, but I, I kind of got tired of it. So I, um, I'm i redoing this whole situation. Um, not a major redo, but, but enough that I thought, eh, I'll share what I'm doing with you guys. So I'm going to introduce a catch can into the circuit. And uh, this is what I've come up with. And it's probably a little bit overkill for what we're doing, but um, this is something I've had for years and don't use anymore. It's an old air conditioning um, oil, um, oh crap, what do they call it? Oil charge can. So basically when you're um, recharging air conditioning, back in the day, um, actually nowadays too, you would fill this with the uh, correct amount of refrigerant oil and as you charge the AC, this will get introduced to the system and you end up with the right amount. Um, so I don't really do that level of AC work anymore. And um, most of the stuff I do is just to, you know, recharge kind of situation, no big deal. So I don't use it anymore. And um, I thought, well, I've got this thing and uh, it is, it can be disassembled. So from the bottom here, let me give me a second. So the bottom can um, come off. Actually, this would be the top in a normal situation, but the way I'm gonna use it is gonna be reversed. And um, I've got a plug in it, because typically it's a flow-through design. But um, as soon as I get it unthreaded, I end up with a pretty good amount of volume in there. Um, I don't know what it is, I don't remember, um, and I took off the label. I'm not gonna try and rethread that one-handed on video. Anyway, so what the plan is, is so the 90 there where the hose is coming down, we're gonna reuse that. We're gonna take off the filter and just have a piece of hose. They're gonna flip that 90 around the other direction. That bracket may come off and may be able to repurpose it to secure the hose where I want it to be. Basically just turning it. And we'll see, we'll see what I have to do. Um, anyhow, so it's, it's gonna, flip around facing toward the front of the bike. Okay, so filter comes off, 90 flips around. And uh, once I get it installed, uh, we'll come back and, and I'll show you what that looks like. And then on the front of the bike, um, they're not here yet, but I have ordered some, what are called insulated clamps. And I'm gonna loosen these, actually take these bolts out and put the clamps on, clamp them around this. I got the right, you know, right size to quote unquote, uh, um, insulated clamps, and those are basically clamps that look like this. So once those come in, um, this will be basically clamped in place, and then the, fill, the, the hose will connect. You can probably see down in there. So the hose will connect there, and the filter will just move up here, move to up here. And so let's talk about the catch can itself. Pretty straightforward. The incoming charge of um, oil vapor and uh, water vapor is lower than the filter. So in theory, what should happen is as the hot stuff comes in, the heavier stuff will fall down and the hot, hotter gases will flow out. And as it cools, uh, the air will continue to flow out. Now this will be exposed to the airstream at all times. And so this can should remain relatively cool, um, which will help make sure that that stuff gets condensed. I have no idea how often I'm gonna to have to drain this thing. Um, that is a pretty good size volume. I sure as heck hope it's not that often that I have to drain this. Um, given that, well, one problem I ran into is I could not find a drain cock that fit that thread size. Um, I guess I could have drilled it all out and re-threaded the whole thing, but, um, I thought, well, it, it's kind of a waste, you know, I've got this threaded bottom. So what I intend to do is whenever I drain it, um, is to get one of my funnels 
and just hold it underneath and drain it and that way it falls through a funnel and into you know my uh, oil pan so that's the idea now there are some um, pretty slick uh, catch can solutions that are out there that are machined aluminum and um, just look really slick. You, you can't even tell that they're there. You know, they're anodized black and they, they conform to that shape right there, that bracket. They kind of flow with that. So they're just there and you've got a you know, hose coming in and they've got a little drain cock at the bottom of them and you just drain it out when the bike's on its side stand and it's supposed to be like a perfect drip right to the ground, missing your fairing and all that stuff. That I have what I think I need here at home and only had to go buy some brass fittings, um, namely these, and I'll put the, the sizes. And uh, these are actually Dorman, so you can get these at most, at least in, in America, um, most uh, auto parts places. So I'll put the Dorman part numbers for those two um, threaded nipples. I think that's what they term them. And then just this plug. And these are all eighth inch NPT. So that's national pipe thread. So they're a universal pipe thread fittings, no big deal. Now this one in the side, I drilled out and you can see it's at an angle. Um, I'd like to say that's on purpose, <laughs> but I got a little crooked, but you know what? Uh, serendipity, right? Uh, just means that word means, uh, hey, awesome. So nice little happy surprise, uh, happy accident as Bob Ross might put it. I ended up angling it down just a little bit and um, hopefully that will help direct, you know, I mean, it's minuscule, but you know, every bit counts, right? In addition to that, if you look at the angle of how things are going, it's gonna be angled down as well. So this may help the hose and everything line up the way we need it to. Now, what may end up happening is I may have to trim off the barb from here and from that end as well. It's no big deal, it's not under any pressure. I would prefer keeping the barb, at least one of them, but um, if I have to take them off to make sure that, you know, I get a good clean line coming down, I don't want hose hanging way back here and you got like this big old long hose going that way. It, it would look kind of chintzy. I mean, it's not that great anyway, but that's the objective. Anyhow, I think I've rambled on enough. So uh, what we'll do is come back uh, in a couple days, moments for you, when the uh, insulated clamps come in, and we'll get started. 2,000 years later. So, so uh, we got the insulated clamps, and uh, they look good, stainless steel, inch and three quarters, which is the uh, outer diameter of this. And um, just doing a quick, simple fitment. Um, it's a very tight grip, so these should not be well, they should do the trick. They should uh, grip on tight enough. And given that there's going to be two um, attached to it, um, you know, if, if it does happen to come loose, we have that redundancy there to prevent it from falling down. And on top of that, the um, hoses, well, the hose here will be um, zip tied on. You know, so the, the hose will be clamped onto this. So I guess you could say there's three um, ways that this is held in place. So what we're gonna do now is, is loosen these up and hopefully <laughs> uh, we've got enough thread. If not, we'll have to cut back and uh, I'll come back with some new, new bolts. Say 3 16 Allen. Just in case you're wondering. So I'm gonna start with just the top one and uh, that way I can get the first one in place and do it, you know, maybe determine how much thread I'm gonna have. I should have enough. And then you can see there's some uh, factory lock or thread locker compound on that. What I'm gonna do is, is I'm not gonna put the thread locker on it first. I'm just gonna do a quick, quick fit and make sure that what I've got is gonna suffice. So it needs to go in with the this nipple facing toward the back of the bike. And the clamp 
is going to be, the first clamp is going to be uh, above the nipple. So it'll be like that. So you can kind of see the orientation of the clamp itself. And so I just got to get everything lined up. Um, I may end up removing the washer. I don't necessarily want to just to get more thread in there without having to go buy another bolt. We'll see. I really don't want to remove the washer. I want to keep that washer on there just for extra surface area. And uh, do you have sort of a problem already? I got to thread the, the nut through the clamp. The, the holes are relatively small on this. Um, not a showstopper, just a little bit of a hurdle. So let me thread this in real quick. Okay. Wow. I mean, by itself, that's, that's really, really good. Um, with that second one on there, it's going to be even better. Let me get the extension and, uh, get that other clamp put on. Okay, we're back. So we got it mounted. That thing is solid. I mean, that is not gonna go anywhere. So definitely um, grab you a set of these. Uh, Ajno. I don't know. <laughs> OZ times NO. How do you pronounce that? Do you guys know? Anyways, um, comes in a, a set of five, and um, I don't know that I'll use these again for anything else, but you know, I'm gonna keep them because these are good clamps, stainless steel, and seem to be what, you know, good construction. And uh, I mean, th those aren't even tight, and that thing is not going anywhere. So, very happy. I am gonna have to loosen them up to twist the, the catch can a little bit so I can line up the hoses and stuff here. But man, yeah, good stuff. So um, I'm not gonna belabor y'all with, with all the fiddly stuff I'm gonna have to do here in a second with the hoses. It is tight and you won't see it anyway. So I'm gonna come back whenever I get everything connected and explain what I did. So we'll do that. Phil, um, if you're gonna spew, spew into this. All right guys, this is where we're at. Um, I have a completed project. There is one flaw that's really bothering me. If you can see that clamp right there, it's kind of twisted up a little bit. And no matter what I tried, I could not get it to not do that. In fact, um, I had another clamp here, the first one. It did the same thing and I thought, well, I'll try a different clamp and uh, you know, it didn't work. This one did fine and I don't understand why this one did not twist up, but the bottom one did. I don't, I don't get that. Um, so we got locked tight and all that stuff on there, so it should never back out. That's gonna bother me though. I can tell you right now, I want it to be straight like this. This one, um, it functionally doesn't cause any problem. Although I don't like it being stressed in that regard. You know, like that twist is adding extra stress, but I also have to get. Man, I tell you what, Hank, about that old meaning of life, man. It's like this, man. 
You like a butterfly flapping his wings deep down in the forest, man. They're gonna cause a tree fall. Like the other thing I had to do was the nipple that I bought originally. I thought was I thought all the pieces were the same size. I thought that the the nipple I bought here that was for the size of the hose was was the same as this, and it's not. So what I had to do there was just wrap some I wrapped some electrical tape around the nipple, and then. It was a nice tight fit. Got this on and then zip tied that on. And then, this is what the backside looks like currently. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. It, it's very stiff. I mean, it's not going to. The other one, uh, other thing I need to do is get a different elbow here. Um, this is, so this elbow was meant to fit that air filter up front and I forgot and so uh, I'll have to get a different uh, elbow, either a plastic or a nylon one, if I can't find a, um, a brass one. Um, I would prefer brass so it doesn't degrade. You know, the nylon can degrade over time. But it's, I mean, it's on there, right? So I got, I got the hose onto that elbow. It's oversized and then zip-tied and then zip-tied back in there. Um, <laughs> against the uh, catch can. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's not gonna go anywhere and it's not readily visible by just about anybody. I guess if they're looking for it, they'll see it. Um, but it makes it, I guess, the positive thing is it makes it easier for me to inspect it, right? I can make sure that everything's still connected. So at this point, it's really just about testing things out, making sure that all is well and I'm not getting a bunch of slobber all over my bike still. Um, all right, uh, just a quick update. Um, went on a ride. Matter of fact, I got these uh, clamps straightened out as you can see. Um, I just used a pair of pliers and held them in place while I tightened down the Allens. But I uh, just got done doing about a 45 minute ride and uh, it's all still tight, cool to the touch. Well, yeah, actually it is, it's cool to the touch. So uh, I have no idea how much goop is in there. I would imagine not a lot at this point. Um, so my intent is to check the level in there or drain it um, like every fill up. And if, if, if I determine, well, okay, every fill up is too often then maybe every other fill up. I mean, it's got quite a bit that it can, um, it can go basically to the bottom. If you go by level, like that would be the the highest it could go before it starts kind of backing up into the uh, hose up toward the engine. Um, so, and even if that were the case, it still should vent well enough out of the top. It may bubble while it's doing it, but I, I don't know. Uh, I hope that I never have to get into that situation, but you never know. Anyways, that's it guys, that is it. So again, peace out and keep it between the ditches.